It's mm. just so simple. This might be my go-to from now on. It's just a very different way of thinking about pizza. It's a really good technique. It's absolutely the perfect crust for all of these different types of toppings. It's got the tomatoes, <laughs> it's got the cheese, it's got mm -hmm. the meat. I love it. It has simplicity, but it's really interesting. It's really a full meal. That's what I love about this pizza. It's the zone. The yes. pizza zone. Yes. This week on Milk Street, we traveled to Brazil to learn how to make white tablecloth pizza. With over 6,000 pizzerias in Sao Paulo, they take pizza seriously. From a simple pizza with ricotta, sitar, and arugula, to pizza carbonara with pancetta, pecorino, romano, and hard-cooked eggs. So please stay tuned for Knife and Fork Pizza from the heart of Brazil. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sauteed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with Allclad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. Allclad. For all your kitchen adventures. I've tried pizzas all over the world, and Brazilian pizza is the best. Brazilian has a lot of creativity. So, it has very delicious recipes, very creative. You wouldn't imagine putting a pizza I really like eating pizza anytime. I like the flavor, I like the texture. I like any pizza that has queijo. If I could, I would eat it every day. Pizza. E a nossa pizza é sempre muito recheada, borda recheada. I usually eat pizza twice a week. That's probably the best moment in the week for me. Although I have this heritage from Italy, we make a very Brazilian style of pizza. When the pizza came to Brazil, all the Italian people brought some culinary culture and they tried to replicate it, but our flour was very different from the Italian, the tomato, um, the cheese, the mozzarella cheese, uh, so everything was so different, they couldn't make the same pizza. We have a lot of ingredients and toppings we make layers of toppings. And because of that, we must have a dough that's a, bit, a little bit stronger. Pizza in Sao Paulo is almost a religion. Uh, it's something you do with your family. The pizzas usually are a big one. It serves uh, up to three or four people. We mix a lot of things. You have always like a cheese and a protein and we have the, the seasonings and some vegetables or tomatoes. We like the crust and we call it cornicioni to, to be uh, large and tall. That's what we think it's like a perfect pizza. Aqui no, em São Paulo, os paulistanos gostam da pizza um pouco mais crocante. Quanto mais tempo ela fica no forno, uma temperatura mais baixa, ela vai ficar com um pouco mais de, de, de crocância na massa. Quanto mais rápida ela é feita, uma temperatura mais alta, ela fica mais macia essa pizza. É o que diferencia os dois estilos de pizza. A cobertura aqui no, no Brasil, ele, a gente tem produtos muito genuínos. Nós te, temos os nossos queijos, é, tomates, molho de tomate, só que é muito característica do nosso terroir, da nossa terra, vai. On 
one side I'm going to make the calabresa with onions and the other one is going to be the gratinada. We have the catupiry cheese, it's a Brazilian cream cheese, provolone cheese, sliced and shredded parmesan on it. This is not so much because we are going to stretch it a little bit with the, par the provolone cheese when we cover it. Make this layer. So Brazilian pizza sounds a bit odd because I hadn't heard about it. Nathan Mirvold, formerly at Microsoft, who's written the modernist books, he did one on pizza. And I asked him, I said, where did you go, you know, to do the research for the book? He said, Sao Paulo was one of the top places. And it's considered to be the pizza capital of the world. Half the people in the town are Italian, six million people, more than in Naples. And there's 6,000 pizzerias there. Wow. But he said it was a very different formula. It was a sturdier crust. Lots of toppings, things like pad thai pizza, you know, that kind of thing. So not something you would get in Avenue J in Brooklyn. So we went down and, and tried these and they were great. So we thought we'd bring them back here. It's just a very different way of thinking about pizza. This is a serious dinner. This is not something yes. on the fly. Yeah, it's really a full meal. That's what I love about this pizza. You can get really creative with the toppings that you put on there. But we're going to get started with the foundation of the pizza. We're going to make the dough, which is going to be end up the crust of the pizza. Traditionally, pizza doughs have a hydration content of about 55 to 60 percent. And some over. And some, some over. Some get some really, really like wet. Yeah, the kind that yeah. you pour out into the pizza and get really, really wet. This pizza goes the other end. It skews the other end, and it tends to be very, very dry. It's about 50 percent hydration. And that is so that we can have a nice sturdy dough that will hold up under the weight of like, oftentimes kind of wet toppings. We are going to be using four cups of all-purpose flour. We found that that was a better flour for use in this kind of dough rather than bread flour because it is so dry and we want to be able to manipulate it and, and stretch it. So we have four cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to add to that before I add the water, I'm going to add two teaspoons of sugar and a teaspoon and a half of table salt. And then I'm going to go ahead and add just a teaspoon of instant yeast. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and mix these dry ingredients on low speed for about 15 seconds. Okay, and now while it's mixing, I'm just going to add a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And now I'm going to add a cup and a quarter of warm water. You want it to be about 100, 110 degrees. All right, so I'm going to pour that all in. And this is going to mix on low speed for about 8 to 10 minutes. And you want to check it. It should not be a very sticky dough. It should not stick all the way to the sides. If it does, you want to go ahead and add a little bit more flour, like a tablespoon at a time. OK, Chris, so it's been about 10 minutes. This looks great. You can see it's not sticking at all to the sides of the bowl, which is what we're looking for. I'm just going to go ahead and scrape that off the dough hook. I'm just going to use my hand. Sometimes that's easier. It got way up there. Sometimes it climbs right out of the bowl. you got to watch these things. Okay, and if you wouldn't mind, since you're standing over there, we could just go ahead and transfer the dough. We have a nice oiled bowl here. <laughs> that last bit, there we are. So you can see the dough is, it's sticky, but it's not wet. It's sort of like tacky, and that's what you're looking for. Okay. Yep, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put some plastic wrap on that. We're gonna let this rise in a nice warm draft-free spot for about one and a half to two hours until it's doubled in size. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours. And, and I, I gotta stop you for a second. Like, how do you know? This always bugs me. They say until the dough is doubled in size. Now, if you have a bucket with straight sides yes. and you can mark it, I, you know, yes. okay, I get it. Those I, are great. I should have one of those. But when you have a bowl like this, does it really it's matter a, if it's exactly double? It doesn't really matter also because this dough is gonna rise again for a second time in the fridge, so it doesn't have to be that exact. But this does allow the dough to develop quite a bit of flavor, which we really liked, so we added this step in. But no, you don't have to be totally exacting okay. on this. But those buckets are really handy, and I like to put like a rubber band around the side to kind of gauge. Yes, you're right, good point. Can I carry on? I feel good. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and divide the dough into two pizza rounds. And I'm just gonna flour the counter. Flour your side as well. Just gonna gently turn this out. And then I'm gonna flour the top a little bit too. 
So I have another question. Yeah, another question. Oh, so surprising. So somebody say punch down dough, mm -hmm. and I always thought you shouldn't punch it down, right? You should be a little more gentle with the Some dough. Some recipes call for turning the dough too. Yeah. And I think that sort of to redistribute the yeast. You don't so really it also want to stretches punch it the hard dough. Down. Well, I mean, if you need to punch it, you can, but you don't have to punch it. No, it's aggressive language, I agree. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and divide this in half. I'm gonna go ahead and get you one. And then we just wanna shape this into a smooth tot ball. And I just sort of roll it against the counter with my hands. Yep. Beautiful, and then you'll see that you have there, this is just a Ziploc baggie that I sprayed with some cooking spray to grease it, which helps getting the ball out later. Pop it in there. Yeah, I put one in a bag like this once and getting it out was... Interesting. <laughs> Interesting, yes. <laughs> now this is gonna go ahead and go into the fridge, like I said, it's gonna rise a second time, and it's gonna go for at least 24 hours and up to 72 hours. So this is a great dough that you can make ahead. And after it's done that and had its time to kind of chill and develop flavor, I'm going to take them out four hours before I wanna make my pizza. And this is so that the dough can warm up because it's such a dry dough. It's really important. It makes it much more stretchy and elastic. So when we go to shape our dough pizza rounds, it's much easier. We have tested that. And if a dough is 75 degrees, that's what it should be. Because mm -hmm. then it's not gonna snap back exactly. on you. It also is easier to work yeah. with. It's a long time to wait, but if you just have a little bit of forethought, you wanna put it on a nice oiled baking sheet and take these out of the bags and then loosely cover them with some plastic wrap and then just set them aside for four hours to warm up. That's why, you know, working remotely is good. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> you can do this pizza recipe exactly. at home. It's perfect. <laughs> All right. Okay, Chris, so the pizza dough has been out and it's been warming for about three hours. And I've turned on the oven to 500 degrees. Rack I know, it's hot. You can feel it, right? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> the rack is set on the upper middle rack. And I've got a pizza steel in there. You can use a pizza stone as well. We're gonna go ahead and start the fresh tomato sauce, which is another unique thing about this recipe. It's a nice bright flavored sauce. It's not cooked at all before we go ahead and put it on the pizza. We're gonna be using a pint of grape tomatoes for this. You wanna use grape tomatoes and not cherry tomatoes because we found that those get a little too jelly-like. These are much meatier. They hold up better. I'm just gonna go ahead and process these just till they're broken down to about quarter size pieces. That looks great. Make sure we don't have any big pieces. I'm gonna give it a couple more pulses. Perfect. Okay, and I'm just gonna transfer this over to this strainer. I've got a fine mesh sieve set over this bowl. We're gonna go ahead and let these drain for about 30 minutes just to get rid of the excess liquid because remember, we have a lot of toppings going on top of this. I thought this was just a basic tomato pie. <laughs> I don't think so. And every now and then you want to give it a little shake just to get all that juice out. Just let this hang out for about a half an hour and then we'll finish our sauce. Okay, so we're ready to finish off this sauce, which I'm gonna go ahead and have you do while I am shaping the pizza dough, which you can see has been warming up. It has once again risen. Why do I always get this job? Like, do this you want to do this job? This you do this fun job. job. Well, you're better at it than I am, so I think this is a perfect distribution of uh, tasks, right? So you're gonna go ahead and add oregano, oregano, pepper flakes, flakes yep. some olive oil. And then just season it. Salt and pepper, please. All right. Save that one for later. This feels great. It's nice and pliable. Just gonna give it a little dusting, and I'm just gonna go ahead and stretch this out using my fingertips. I'm gonna give it a flip. Very easy to work with. And so it's I'm not gonna not look sticky. up in the air as you throw it up in the air? <laughs> Chris, look over there. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we're looking for about 13 inch circle, and you wanna work sort of from the center out because we want the center to be thin, and we wanna have about a half inch border to hold in all those delicious toppings, but this is really, really easy. It's probably one of the easier pizza doughs that I've ever mm. worked with. So that's it. It's about 13 inches, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I'm gonna transfer this to our peel. I'm gonna sprinkle it with a little bit of semolina, semolina. flour, which is great. Yeah, they're like little ball bearings. It's better than cornmeal. Cornmeal's too- It's too crunchy, yeah. Too this crunchy. Is, 
This works, it's better than flour as well. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and lift this up gently. I like to use the back of my hand so I don't poke holes in it. And you might have to reshape it a little bit. All right, and then if you wouldn't mind, you're gonna put half of that because we're gonna need the other half for the other pizza and spread it evenly on top, that would be fabulous. This is really the simplest sauce, and I love it. You want me to leave an edge? About a half inch. Border would be great. Okay. Doing a good job. <laughs> Doing the best I can. Okay. All right. We are. So we are now ready to start with the first of our many toppings that we're going to be putting on this pizza. So this is not. This is not finished. This is no. this is foundational. Yes. This is okay. this is the foundation for all the pizzas. So. Okay. Yeah. I really love this one. This is like a comfort pizza. We're making a pizza carbonara. Mm -hmm. So here we have crisped up about four ounces of pancetta. We have some whole milk, shredded mozzarella, and some pecorino romano. Mm -hmm. And we're just gonna use half of all of these. So this is for two pizzas. Okay. Go ahead and top this pizza that's already been sauced. So I have yet another question. Great. <laughs> yeah, he's like, yeah, great. Um, this sauce is very dry, and the reason is you don't want a wet tomato sauce that's gonna sog out or Soften the dough? Exactly, yeah, okay. because a lot of these toppings, I mean, this isn't a good example of that, but a lot of the toppings, you know, they add a lot of moisture and weight to the right. pizza. This one is leaning more towards the rich side. <laughs> yeah. It's probably why I like it so much. <laughs> and then how about this? We are not being shy with the cheese. All right. I feel like we're having our own little pizza party. <laughs> it's very quiet for a pizza party, but <laughs> it <is>. it's okay. <laughs> All right, again, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the 500 degree oven, and it's gonna cook for about eight to 10 minutes. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, so pizza's out of the oven. It smells mm -hmm. fantastic. It smells great. And now we're gonna add our finishing touches. Now, traditionally, raw egg yolk is drizzled on top of our pizza, but we decided to go ahead, just be easier to do a hard boiled egg yolk. We like to hard boil our eggs. We like to steam them for about 12 minutes for a fully cooked yolk. And then you want to run it under some ice water. So raw egg yolk would be drizzled on the mm -hmm. pizza when it comes out of the oven, yes. and not before it goes in? No, 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 when it comes out. Oh, and it's going to cook a little bit? Presumably, with the, it yeah. will cook with the heat of the oven. We're just going to go ahead and grate this right on top. Actually, it looks really pretty. And do the other one, just in case it wasn't rich enough. <laughs> All right. Okay, and then lastly, we're just gonna go ahead and sprinkle with some nice freshly ground black pepper. But without black pepper, it's kind of not exactly. carbonara, definitely, which is really why they missing. named it carbonara. All right. Ooh, it's hot. I'm gonna slide that off. Scoop that over. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. All right. You need a bigger pizza wheel. <laughs> you know those. You know those big ones. <laughs> Oh, this looks so good. I don't know if we need a fork and knife for this one. No, I, was I don't say. Think I think we might be able to just pick this one up. There we go. Enjoy. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. It's so cheesy. That's really good. It's really nice. The pancetta adds a nice saltiness. You've got all that cheese, mm. it's gooey cheese, that black this pepper. It's the zone. The yes. pizza zone. Yes. <laughs> it's got the tomatoes, it's got the cheese, it's got mm -hmm. the meat, it's got a little pepper, a little egg. And I really love this tomato sauce because it cooks just enough in the oven, but it still is fresh and really, really bright. It's mm -hmm. just so simple. This might be my go-to tomato sauce from now on. Mm. Mm. We're just not going to talk anymore. I know. We're just like, we'll be back with you in a couple minutes. This is a really good one. You know, for another pizza recipe we've done here, we took cherry tomatoes, cut them in half, then we mashed them mm. in a colander and let them drain. Mm -hmm. So you get bigger pieces, but that also worked pretty well if you want to get rid of the liquid. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's a really good technique. All right, so now we're done with the pizza carbonara and we're ready to move on to our last topping. As soon as we're finished eating this one. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay, Chris, so here we are, um, ready to make our final pizza. This is a ricotta, za'atar, and arugula pizza. Mm. Really, really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. We have oiled onions here, nice red onion, thinly sliced. I'm gonna put half on our sauced pizza. I like this already. Right? <laughs> onions, and ricotta, we're, and we're done. No. <laughs> I love za'atar. 
Yeah, this is a really yeah. nice one. Again, like totally crazy Middle Eastern flavors coming from, you know, out of Brazil. But I like it. They had a fair number of Lebanese mm -hmm. immigrants to Brazil too, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Yeah, but again, you can put anything on a pizza. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into our 500 degree oven for about 10 minutes total until it's nice and brown. Thank you. Okay, now while that's cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and make this ricotta topping. I'm just gonna add four tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. We have some lovely tangy sumac. And we have dried oregano. And here we have the za'atar. And if you can't find it in the store, it's pretty easy to make, or you can order it online. So sesame seeds, mm -hmm. some marjoram or thyme, what would you use for the herb? Yeah, thyme or oregano, or you could add more oregano since it's already in the recipe. Just season it, salt and pepper. And sumac, of course, but. And sumac. Again, you would just maybe increase what's in the recipe. Okay, I'm just gonna fold this together. This looks amazing. Mm. Right? <laughs> like I could just, give me a spoon. That's one of my, <laughs> That's my hungry noise, mm, mm. Yeah, I like that. Sorry, we still have to wait a few more minutes. Okay, I'm just gonna set this aside and we're gonna okay. wait till the pizza comes out of the oven. So this is like eight to 10 minutes, the, right. the usual. The, the usual, oven. yeah. It's already been in for a couple of minutes, so it's probably gonna be another six to eight minutes and then we'll go ahead and finish off the okay. pizza. So the pizza just came out of the oven and the onions are nice and cooked down and we're gonna go ahead and finish it off. So first we're gonna go ahead and dollop half of this delicious Spiced ricotta mixture. I'm really excited to eat this. Could you go faster? I'm going to <laughs> Speed this up, please. <laughs> I'm making sure each piece has got the same amount of ricotta on there. And then here we're gonna go ahead and dress only half of the arugula that is going on both pizzas because we don't wanna dress the other half too soon because it'll start to wilt down by the time the other pizza's done baking. So I'm just gonna put a bit of olive oil, a little bit of fresh lemon juice. Go ahead and toss that up. I absolutely love putting arugula on any of my pizzas. I think it's the best. Okay. Also, you know, across the world, a lot of people, especially the Middle East, when they dress the salad, olive oil or some kind of oil and lemon juice. That's it? That's all you need. If the greens, and a little salt, maybe. Right, salt and pepper. The greens are so flavorful, that's really all you need. You don't need to, you know, put gloppy dressing on there. This is beautiful. I'm just gonna carefully slide this off. You know, once in a while, people ask me about my job and I complain <laughs> how hard it is. Oh. They just go like, oh yeah, right? This is, you have such a tough job. Yeah, right? And excuse my fingers, there we go. Thank you. All right. How are we going to tackle this one? With our hands, because our hands? pizza and... <laughs> I, I better have a napkin then. <laughs> well, also, I'd like to say that this crust really holds up nicely. It really does. It's absolutely the perfect crust for all of these different types of pizzas and all their toppings. That's my favorite. Really? Well, there's a lot of onion. It goes mm -hmm. really well with the spiced cheese. Yeah, I love the cheese and all the spices, and then you get that, like, fresh mm. arugula. I love it. This is really good. Again, it's like the whole meal. Well, it has simplicity, mm -hmm. but it's really interesting, like with the sumac right. and the sitar and the arugula. And this one I find a little bit lighter, like than the carbonara, which was, was lovely and rich. But this is just like a light, fresher pizza. It's nice. It's like being a rock and roll band. Save your best song for the last. Right. I think this mm -hmm. is the best. They're all great. Mm -hmm. This is my favorite. So if you want something different in pizza, we suggest you look to San Paolo, where they have 6 million Italians mm -hmm. and 6,000 pizzerias. And there's a whole new way of thinking about pizza, which is white tablecloth, knife and fork, and really interesting mm -hmm. topics. This is pizza with ricotta, zatar, and arugula. You can get this recipe, actually all three of these mm -hmm. recipes, and all the recipes from the season of Milk Street Television at MilkStreetTV.com. All episodes and recipes from the season of Milk Street Television are available for free at our website, MilkStreetTV.com. Please access our content, including our step-by-step -step recipe videos, from your smartphone, your tablet, or your computer. The new Milk Street Cookbook is now available and includes every recipe from our TV show. From fried shrimp tacos and Thai-style vegetable stir-fry, Mexican chicken soup, and Swedish cardamom buns, the Milk Street Cookbook offers bolder, fresher, simpler recipes. 
Order your copy of the Milk Street Cookbook for $27, 40% less than the cover price, and receive a Milk Street tote with your order at no additional charge. Call 855-MILK-177 or order online. Funding for this series was provided by the following. That meal. You sautéed, you seared, and you served. Cooking with Allclad. Bonded cookware designed, engineered, and assembled in the USA for over 50 years. Allclad. For all your kitchen adventures.